saw you like this. I drove by, your hands were like this. You're like, what the frick, dude? <laughs> Are you kidding me? You can't have this happen again. No, I was just, you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> Unbelievable. So, so frustrating. You know, that's racing though. You know, you go and you prove the car and it's been so good for like three weeks, no problems. And then boom, problem manifests. Caught you with your pants down. One way I found it. Yeah, I mean, really, it's, it really happened. So guys, what we're going to do is we're going to try and extend that lip right there on that throttle body. We're still going to use the same clamp, but the clamp can never really keep that in because, well, we just didn't have enough meat there. All right, so I think we just need to find ourselves some three inch and we'll be ready to rip. Hopefully a quick little one well deal and be off to it. Oh, that's pretty close, dude. Weird it's a Ford it's, part. Yeah, and that bevel's in. Yeah. Oh. Okay. You can do that. All right. So we're just going to add about three quarter of an inch or something like that and then put a bead on the end, you think? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Got a plan. Okay. Dirty old material. I barely cleaned it. I used a bench grinder, wire wheel, so who knows what's going on here. When I'm sick, so it's gonna get like sick. double whammy. Yeah. It's gonna be ugly and you're cranky. Yes. Just another Tuesday. <laughs> okay. You can see where it's protruding out here now, where it's extended past this, and our rib is out here. Didn't fall it's off. It's got two ribs, so it's got the ribs where the, the ugly welds are, and then I've actually just crimped in the ribs there. And get one of those little fancy roly roly tools. Yeah, man. All right, well, Go give her a little test drive. Well, guys, I actually took out the Crown Vic, and it rips, has no problems, figures. Um, I have a 13 year old brother, most of you guys don't know this. Um, he's, you know, Growing up, he was the super mechanical one. He always had some really, really, really interesting, far out there ideas. About six or seven years ago, he got in a really bad accident. He was, you know, modifying some scooters and stuff and getting like 100 miles to the gallon and going 100 miles an hour in these scooters and stuff. And then uh, he ended up getting in an accident, got run over by a semi. Uh, and he's had some damage. You know, he's been, he was in a coma for like two and a half months and he's not the man that he once was. Um, I got to take him out for a ride. I really didn't feel totally comfortable putting him on the channel. Sometimes there's some cruel people out there. Most of you guys are absolutely awesome, uh, and I love you guys. Uh, you guys are fantastic, but I just I just didn't get the warm fuzzies doing that, you know, putting him out there. Maybe one day we might do that. He might want to talk about what happened to him. Maybe not. Got to take him out for a ride in the Crown Vic, and uh, it's the fastest car he's ever been in. He had been in my dad's car, and we always have conversations about my dad's car, which went 10.7, 131. But um, the Crown Vic is definitely faster than that. Uh, I got to take him out, blow the tires off, and it put such a smile, and he was laughing like crazy. Uh, that gave me the warm fuzzies. I really wanted to share that with you guys, but one day I might might put him on the channel if he's good and comfortable with it. But but now I wanted to show you guys uh, Calvin Nelson, and this is the fastest front-wheel drive LS vehicle in the world. Check this clip out because this guy has some brass. Come up to the OG defense up there. Take your back to the Rattler. This is the quickest front-wheel drive LS powered vehicle in the world. That is crazy, dude. Yep. <laughs> My dad and I built this in uh, about five or six months. 
It's a uh, LS4 out of an Impala, the 4T80E out of a Cadillac. And how fast have you guys gone with it? Nine. 980, 984 at 149 miles an hour. Yeah. Oh my gosh, dude, 149? Yeah, well look, look at the cage. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who does uh, the LS4, there's a guy called the LS4 King, and he does, uh, he has a front wheel drive um, Monte Carlo, mm -hmm. and he previously held the uh, record. And he put on a challenge for the um, I heard about yes, this. Yes, the LS4 challenge. I heard about that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so we built this car to compete in that. Unfortunately, that kind of fell through. I mean, uh, we took it to LS Fest, uh, got a lot of uh, attention there. I mean, we, we unfortunately broke the transmission. <laughs> I hear that's like the feasible right, break is pretty yeah. much all this. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, well, the 4T65E that they came with. They're, they're like made of glass. This the 4080 e <clears throat> which they only put behind the North Star engines. Mm -hmm. So they put this garbage engine in front of, well, garbage depending on who you Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Super stout transmission behind this engine that regularly fails at 100,000 miles. And then they put this engine that's capable of taking lots and lots of horsepower in front of a transmission that's made of glass. So you can find this for dirt cheap because nobody knows what to do with them. And you can find this for dirt cheap because that's all failed and they won't give them anything because it's basically totaled when the uh, uh, engine fails. Ugh. And we just put them together. Yeah, and, I see. Uh, and how big is the turbo on this guy? So we had a S475 on it. That took a while to spool. It's a still the stock converter. You can't get converters for these things. Oh, geez. Unfortunately, it would kind of blow. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that didn't work too great for 60 foot times. Uh, we, our best time was a 176 60 foot. We put a uh, GT4294 Garrett turbo <clears throat> on it now. It's a 70 hot side or cold side and uh, 75 on the hot side. So that spools way faster just from a quick driveway t test. It's like totally different. Wow. So um, the big limitation that we've been running into is this thing with um, the factory uh, computer. Obviously, they do the torque management. They modulate the line pressure to get yeah. it to shift softer. And when you disable that, it shifts very hard. <laughs> All the time? Yes. And when you uh, break, you know, it, on a rear-wheel drive car, it just squeaks the tires and mm -hmm. you keep going. On a front-wheel drive car, Squeaking the tires, it's an open differential as well. Oh boy. So if you break traction, one of them's gonna grab, one of them's gonna lose it, and then it's Oh yeah. And it 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 does this stupid thing where like if you turn the wheel too far, it unlocks the one side and keeps wanting to go that way. Oh. And if it you you know, you try to bring it back and then it goes the other way and then it unlocks the one side and you know, shoves you the other way, and you're doing this. Yeah, that sounds and, sketchier than tater tot right there, dude. That's freaking <laughs> wild, dude. Yep. So, um, you basically, if it gets stupid, just get out of it. Mm. That's that's my advice. Aaron Mello, mm -hmm. he has developed a very neat way to do uh, torque management with the uh, Terminator X. So we're probably going to try that initially, mm -hmm. and then if that, um, well, we still want to take it to the challenge, so we need to change the ECU no matter what. Mm -hmm. So, intake going back. That's what we right. talked to you about. Yeah, yeah. ECU's going back. We're going to put an alternator on it. Um, yeah, it was 16 volt. We made our own 16 volt battery for the car. Um, that took a dump recently. So yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of sat over winter and uh, we forgot about it. And uh, well, yeah. Mm. No, dude, it's an awesome project. <laughs> yep. man. We'll definitely look forward to seeing more. Yep. on this a little later well, you got your youtube channel yep. and or you got an instagram as well yep yeah it's the same thing yeah it's okay. nivlac 57 it's my name spelled backwards so i'm calvin okay. um so it's n-i-v-l-a-c 57 on uh, youtube and instagram and uh we do lots of stuff like this um so make sure you go over and subscribe i would really appreciate it guys yeah and uh definitely man. trying to share as much knowledge as we have you know it's uh we've been at this for a while so Definitely, definitely look like seasoned veterans, but I yep. really like what you guys are doing with Atlas. Yep. It's I awesome, appreciate man. it. Thanks. Well, guys, meeting the Nelsons was pretty awesome. These guys, they really set out to break records, and they do. They set a number of land speed records 
have the fastest front wheel drive LS, and they have the fastest Atlas 4200 that is like the GM Barra. Now, I got with Calvin and I brought home some parts that are from an Atlas, and I'm really looking forward to porting them. In the next episode or two, we're actually going to be doing some stuff where we had started a modified M4 head. Had the fastest M manual M4 in the country. And we had modified the head and made some major improvements. Now this Atlas head is really, really fascinating. And I certainly hope that one day that that motor will catch on because really it has a tremendous amount of potential. I kind of like the idea of what Calvin has done and also Richard Holderner. If you guys haven't checked out his channel, he's got some awesome stuff. He has an engine dyno. He's going to be doing a lot of testing with the Atlas 4200. And I think all of us, we work together, we can really be able to further that platform and make a ton of power on an inline six engine. It really has good bones, and I think that it can be as good as or better than the best Barra and the best 2J. But we need to invest some time and really try and push it there, because right now it just does not have the aftermarket stuff. Now, I didn't set out on this episode in order to make a sentimental episode whatsoever, but however, uh, Laz wanted to introduce his mom's car, and it's got an interesting story behind it. I remember Laz and I going home, and this thing... You know, like his mom and I picking us up from kindergarten, and yes, I've known Laz since kindergarten. I went to the same school, picking us up, going over and hanging at Laz's house. Hope you guys enjoy. Well, here she is. Memories. Yeah. Always been orange as long as I can remember. Late middle school, probably. I tried some, like, oh, I want to get this, like, wax stuff, and I was like a new finish or some, like, special brand, you know, something that's supposed to restore paint. And I started putting it on here. And it just totally jacked up the paint on the head. <laughs> Never been the same ever <laughs> since. Uh, it's always been horrible, but yeah, it left streak marks. And it was like I read the can later. Do not use on fiberglass cars. Oh, so like, oh sweet. Mm. But um, directions. She's been sitting since November. Had to bring it out of storage and start driving yeah. it a little bit. No, that's definitely true, man. Doesn't miss a beat. But so you think you're gonna pass it down to your son? Yeah, probably. We'll see. Might keep it, might not. <laughs> what you... um, lost my mom in um, August, and she's had it since it was new, and she loved it and everything. So. And what year like, is it now? 72. 72. So it's a C3. It's the last year of the chrome bumpers, and I can't remember if the flat back window was last year and that or not, but so this is actually the last like year the... of actually a Stingray. Oh, okay. So this is like the first year of emissions, isn't it? Um, this is like some California special, so it's a non-emissions car. What? Yeah, and I don't. I think it was because it wasn't allowed in California. Hmm. But it's pretty much not. I mean, the motor's not original, but it's all snog. It just had this motor gone through a few years ago. It's a 350, real small cam, factory four-speed, factory AC, factory tilt power windows. That was kind of neat options for the car. So it wasn't the big block convertible that everybody wants, but it did have some nice options. Does it have an LS in its future or what? I think it might have a carved LS in its future. <laughs> Ew. Keep the four speed, keep the carburetor, and spend some crazy RPM. If you don't drive it, it's going to pretty much rot. going to have a bunch more problems, and kind of keeping it in the game and stuff is definitely definitely a good idea. So It's fun, like, rolling through the corners and stuff with a manual, and you can use, like, all the power because there's not that much of it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what, 215s in the front, 225s up front? Yeah, there was something with the car that was funky about it. Couldn't run the same size all the way around because I think it's been in a couple of accidents in its life. Oh. It used to be red, and she said that red was a bad... Bad omen. Bad omen, <laughs> so she had to paint it orange. Yeah. It never got an accident after it was orange. But I think it was in, like, three pretty good deals before that. Don't, I don't get to see it that often. It's usually only <laughs> under situations where you got something that yeah. went down, so... I want to take it out of reverse. You got reverse safety. Okay. I love that car ready to choke. Ship it on the dyno one day. Yeah, it's got that Flowmaster sound. Okay, well there you go, yeah. Put them on there probably with 15. <laughs>
think we all got those. We all have those dumb mistakes. We try and do something, fix something up, and make it worse. There you go. Now you can hear the format. You can actually see the top of the fuel. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's not contaminated. It looks good. <laughs> That's been in there since November, too. Wow. It doesn't smell bad. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching. It's uh, always I'm so glad that you guys come and hang out and watch our videos. We got a lot of stuff to share, and I'm so glad that you guys dig it. You guys got Mother's Day coming up Sunday, so don't forget to go out and get something really nice for your mother. Also, wanted to thank you guys for your support. You can always get your Rodney poster, or Uncle Sam poster. We got hats, T-shirts, lanyards, stickers, anything at all. Definitely helps support us, so, so we can keep cranking out videos like this. Hope you guys enjoy. God bless you. We'll see you next episode.